there. Welcome to Schmooze with Suze. I'm Suze Montgomery, your host. And boy, this is one that I need more information on. I hope you do too, because I'm looking at population numbers. And the population numbers, for example, the city of Ventura, 30% of the entire population demographically in the city of Ventura are seniors. 27% in the county. So we're graying America. We're getting older. We need more help. We need more services. We need more resources. We need more and we need more advocates. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of those, but I'm hoping in time that we can kind of mentor some new people and get them in. And one of them uh, that I'm very fortunate <laughs> to have on my board at the Ventura Council area on aging with the county rather is Mike Williams who represents gray law and I need to know what you guys do. I know what you kind of don't do, but what do you do? It's... Um, now you're an attorney. I'm an attorney. Or you played one on TV. I played one on TV. I okay. uh, was sworn in in 1981. I've been with Gray Law continuously since uh, August of 1979, the year that wow. it was formed. So we're uh, July 1st, technically, Gray Law is 40 years old, which is a pretty good track record. We were much larger uh, back then, and we did all kinds of social security and all uh, disabled and seniors. And then the funding for disabled back during the Reagan eras uh, completely dropped out, and we Gee, ended up a with, a, with, <laughs> with a grant for 60 and over, which used to mean something completely different than what it means now. 60 and over in 1979 was old, and now it's not old because I'm over 60. So it's Boomers. Boomers. Absolutely. We're going to kill the market. We're going to absolutely put everybody in foreclosure. <laughs> I th we're the longest living generation in the history of the United States, which are boomers 1945 to 63. Does that sound right? Um, I think it's closer to 58, but okay. uh, I'm not absolutely positive. And the thing that always surprises me is we don't have a national number for what is considered a senior. So there's not like uh, 55, 56, sure. 65, 62. So we've never, the, you know, the nationally, we've never gotten it together to actually give it a number. The Older American Act says age 60 and over. So that's who we represent. Okay. Age 60 and over. But that's just a random number. It really is. I mean, you can't get Social Security now. Uh, I, I got it when I was 66. Uh, my secretary can't get it until she's 67. So it, it is really genuinely a random number. We're still stuck with age 60, which is perfectly fine. Because the graying of America and the numbers are just skyrocketing, yes, right? Yes, they are. Absolutely. We're not dying fast enough. Not dying fast enough. Wow, we're going to need a lot. So with, with seniors, you have a, a whole different demographic to work with. You've got different, you've got disabled, but they are not doing disabled. So you're just specifically doing senior populations. Senior population, yes. And you provide services. Provide services. And you, you as, would ask me uh, what we do. Yeah. Uh, it's one-on-one, -on -one, face to face at the senior center. So we're at virtually every senior center in Ventura County ex except Piru. And uh, we answer questions about all a uh, wide range of topics. It's changed over the 40 years con considerably. We used to do a lot of uh, Social Security and Medicare, but Medicare has been taken over by the HICAP program, and so we do a lot of Medi-Cal uh, SSI. We tried not to interfere with the private bar, so we take cases that the private bar really isn't interested in, which is means they don't, they can't earn a living doing them. So we do, we do overpayment cases for SSI and uh, and Medi-Cal. So this is fee for service, right? No, this is all free. You guys are pro bono. You're pro bono, absolutely. Free. Free. That's scary. How isn't often it? do you do this? <laughs> How can you make a living on okay. free? Well, I have I have my private practice because I can't afford to do it for free. Okay. So I have a, I do mostly estate planning and probate anymore in my in my private practice, um, but I still get about twenty hours a weekend at minimum. That's a lot. That's a I lot. mean, so this is community service for you. Yeah, uh, I get a stipend to act as the administrator. I so do a lot of paperwork. So why don't you do kids stuff? Why do you do? Why did you decide to do senior stuff? Um, oh well, that's a loaded question because I yeah. never decided to do it. it oh, wasn't, it was it decided wasn't for you. It was no. Well, that wasn't decided for me, but it was an opportunity. I, I worked for a prominent local attorney when I was in law school, 
and I was told by a friend of mine who worked for the Secret Service that I needed to get out of that office. <laughs> Long story, uh, so I was offered a job as Gray Law Open, just as a, a law student. Oh my gosh. And they were going to pay me a wage and buy my books for school. So I mean, that was a really good deal for me. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I worked with Gray Law from 1979 to 1981 when uh, Mr. Reagan, President Reagan, sliced our budget from about $250,000, which was a lot of money in 1979 or 1981. It was. To 16500 a year. What was the reason for this? Uh, well, it was about the same time when they were closing the state hospital. So it was a pretty oh, broad Oh, short-sighted thinking. Short-sighted thinking. Okay, got it. So um, they, nobody else wanted the job, and I had just been sworn in, so they offered me the, to run Gray Law, and I was stupid enough to uh, accept the job. And I'm here. so grateful you were <laughs> stupid enough to take the job. But I, I like it. Uh, it's, of course you do. I, I have a story that I tell. Uh, we, we did almost no debt work, uh, but I talked to a lady. Uh, she was 77 at the time, so, so this is, I'm sure she's gone, but I still won't mention her name. That's okay. And she was being hounded by Montgomery Wards, who wasn't around either, and uh, she owed $300, and it was the end of her life as far as she was concerned. And so I wrote to Montgomery Wards and offered them $5 a month if they would back off because she was a frail senior citizen. And what they should have done is they should have contacted me. But instead, they wrote her a letter apologizing to her and saying, whatever you want to send us is totally fine. Send us $5 a month. And she wrote me a note on the envelope that says, oh, Mr. Williams, you saved my life. And it's probably the defining change in my life when I said, you know, I really like doing this. And that's sort of what we do. But back then, we would have maybe three debt problems where, where people were upside down with their credit cards or whatever, um, total in a year out of 1,000 or 1,100 people that we'd see. And now, out of 1,000 or 1,100 people we see, it may be 300 a year. Wow. It's completely changed because think about it, the people who were seniors in 1979 were, had lived through the Depression. Sure. They had no debt. Absolutely. And, and now um, it's too easy. And, and it, the thing that people don't understand is that it doesn't have to be an enormous debt. If you're employed one day and you're injured and so you're not employed the next day, even a car payment is impossible. And if you're living on Social Security, you're transitioning to something that's considerably less than what a normal working wage is, a $20,000 debt or a $15,000 mm. debt can look like a mountain. It is a mountain. Insurmountable. And so the, the problems that didn't exist when people had, didn't have debt are uh, consuming people's lives now. Well, it's a different world, too. Yes. I mean, the world has changed so dramatically. I mean, we used to be a... We used to have ethics. We used to have work ethics. We used to have respect. We used to have virtuous society. But sure. now I'm just watching democracy disintegrate. And that's a whole new show <laughs> that we could do on that one because yes, I could is. get carried away. If you could look somebody in the eye and shake their hands, yes. you had an agreement. That's exactly and right. It does not exist anymore. That's well, true. Well, it doesn't exist openly it does exist among a lot of people still but yeah, not, it, not but of a certain age but of a certain age absolutely i totally get you with the senior thing because my whole life has been dedicated to working with seniors i love them i mean they're just they're my best friends they are my family i there's something special about each and every one of them i've got about student wise probably 200 or so students <laughs> and i teach six classes a week yeah. i absolutely adore them they have no filters they say exactly what they're thinking they've got these wonderful rich histories and they're honorable people that still oh, have absolutely. virtues absolutely so no i can totally understand why you want to work with that population and I, and I look back, you know, when I was a kid, and seniors scared me when I was a kid <laughs> because they were old, and I was always afraid they were going to die. And gruff. Oh, yeah, they gruff. were. They Absolutely. were tough. They weren't fun. 
Yeah. But uh, you know, times have changed. The economy's changed. I'm watching now with the threats of dismantling so many institutions, oh, including, social security. including Social Security. So I'm watching that, and it's kind of scary for some of my people because a lot of my people just live on Social Security yeah. and modest means. Well, that's our that's our main clientele is people so who live on a low fixed income. Yeah, what do you do? I mean, well, a lot of it is holding their hand and listening to their problems. To be perfectly honest, okay. but to make sure that they're not making mistakes. I wish we, we could do that, just st make them stop making mistakes. But we have so many people that think it's a good idea. We can avoid probate if we put the kids on the deed. And then all of a sudden, one of the kids is borrowing money from the bank, and mom and dad lose their house. Oh, uh, my and, God, and, really? And, so, but, and that's so easy to stop if you just explain to them the problem, the, our problem. And, and it is a problem because we don't hear all of the results. We hear the nightmares so if it turned out okay we're never going to hear about it we don't know how if there's a percentage of kids that don't cheat and steal from their parents but i know for a fact that there's that the vast majority are probably good kids but it just doesn't seem like it sometimes when you get three phone calls in a single week mama saying uh i'm not sure what my son did but i think he took thirty-five thousand oh dollars you know and that's their life savings. That, that's the problem. It, you know, sometimes it's not $35,000. Sometimes it's $300,000. And, and that's, for, uh, hopefully, that's the exception. But um, people get into trouble. People, you know, the kids get out of work or are Does injured. Does the world changed or what? Well, Especially every in generation your, in yours, says yeah. that. <laughs> I guess they probably do, if yeah. you listen to that. But again, I just feel like there's so much chaos right now and I a lot of my seniors are it it's really interesting I've got one group uh, that really are affected by the chaos and they're just sitting around wringing their hands yeah. and the other group is like hey you got there you figure it out so and then you probably get both sides or more than both sides you probably get numerous different stories is there any commonality to a typical client uh, well we're low income uh, okay. That's probably the commonality as far as race, creed, culture, religion, whatever. Uh, grab we, bag. We, we, yes, a total grab bag, which I like. I think it's, it's appropriate. I mean, it represents Ventura County. So you, how many cases do you usually carry? A okay. lot, right? Uh, well, no. Um, okay. We see about 1,000 people a year. Of those active cases, we probably don't have more than 30. But uh, we don't really do litigation. That's one of the problems. Uh, I did a major fundraising effort for, with, the, with the Judicial Council uh, to start a program here in Ventura and, uh, probably, oh my God, uh, probably six or seven years ago uh, because they were going to offer it to two counties. And of course, San Francisco and Los Angeles ended up okay. with, with the grants. Uh, but we could have started a litigation program right here in Ventura County. And I, I think it would have been excellent. Uh, it's needed. We're a drop in the bucket. I, if somebody starts a legal services program, since we're sort of the grandfather, right. uh, they call us and say, is it okay? And I'm going, we're a drop in the bucket. We can't help. We, uh, the, the Area Agency on Aging did a survey in 2009, and the top three things that they, that they said are needed by seniors in Ventura County are a book right here that explains some of the legal rights of seniors, uh, a senior hotline, and legal services for seniors. See, and we'd already been in existence for 30 years when that took place, but 32% of the population was all that knew that we even existed. 68% of the population in Ventura County had never heard of gray law and didn't know what we do. The gray law that they thought was the advertisements on the TV oh. from Los Angeles doing personal injury cases. Show me this book again. Oh, sure. What was this? You did this this morning. So what does this represent? Okay. Um, Scott Jones wrote this book as a response to that survey. Okay. Because one of the problems was the book. And so he generated this, and Scott and I, well, the Area Agency on Aging prints them. Okay. And uh, So they, that's a county. That's a county. Funded. Okay. And uh, we, I, uh, give the classes. And... Scott and I started doing it, and then he retired, and I've probably done 
200 of them. And now, who's your audience? Uh, seniors and caregivers. How come I've not heard about this? <laughs> You're part of the 68%. You're the I problem. I guess not. See, Suze, you're the so problem. where's your marketing here, My Michael? Marketing. We have no budget, and that's really our, our downfall. We have no budget at all. Are you available for presentations? Have all the time. Okay, so you're going to come to my, I'm the chair of the Ventura Council on Aging sure. in the city of Ventura. So you, if I ask you, you'll come and give us a whole presentation on this. Well, the class is two hours. So you, uh, in t as Teddy Roosevelt said, if you want me to talk for more than three hours, I'm going to have to make some notes. So just let me to know the topic. One of my favorites was Teddy. <laughs> let me know the topic. I, don't, I didn't think you were that old. Yes, I so, am. <laughs> so. Aging by the minute. <laughs> oh, yeah, me too. Let me tell you. I, got, I have proof. <laughs> but, I bet I got underwear older than you. Oh, I don't know. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm not going to take that any further at all. <laughs> I thought you'd like that one. Yeah, I do. Well, this to me fascinates me okay. because I haven't heard about it and why it would be oh, okay. so beneficial for so many people. Absolutely. It's legal information for the elderly. And uh, the class is free and the book is free. They, but they're set up through the Area Agency on Aging, and I will guarantee they will hate me forever for having this on TV and saying that, but the classes are wonderful. Honey, I'm the new chair. You there can you get go. away with this. Absolutely. Easily get away with there you this. Go. I'm fascinated by, I think everybody could use this. Absolutely. Kids of aging parents. Sure, absolutely. Caregivers uh, and anybody. seniors. Uh, uh, whomever. Do you do a lot with caregivers? Do you have to deal with uh, a lot of caregiving people? I mean, there's more and more of them, and now they're talking about more and more legislation uh, for caregivers also. Well, plus and minus for caregivers. I mean, there's if you're a caregiver, technically, if you're not a family member, you, you can't inherit from whoever you're taking care of okay. now without going through some legal process. So, I mean, it's positive and negative, but there are a lot of caregivers. But it also puts seniors at risk. Uh, when a caregiver has an opportunity to take advantage of them. And that's, and that, that's I negative. hear those horror stories oh, every so once in a while. There. They're out there. So there's no way of licensing or bonding or anything like that with caregivers? <laughs> or is that another issue altogether? I think that's probably another issue altogether. I, I think it's a great idea, um, but I, I don't think it's realistic, especially considering that uh, a majority of them are minimum wage. So how do you license or require somebody on minimum wage to get a license? Well, I see every day, I see another one pop up, another home yeah. health care service sure. pop up, and I don't even know what the regs are on that one. I know about SNFs, skilled yeah. nursing facilities, by the way. Yeah. Uh, SNFs I know because I work in SNFs. Sure. So I know their license by the state and sure. the feds as well. This is fascinating to me. I think I'm going to have to take this course. Okay. Okay, just I, because I get asked a thousand times, and uh, before we started tape rolling, I had to tell Michael that I have been referring to him for, what, 20 years or whatever it's been, a long, long time, because I guess you're the sole source to really have a lot of ans answers to questions, because I don't know anybody else that does anything like gray law. Well, it's, if it's not something we do, we probably know who does it, if so it you can refer be down. Out. So we refer a lot of people, a lot of people. Okay, so there's also, I looked at what you do private consulting on one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, this, is, this is what- That's what we do at the senior center. Okay, face so this is all one -on -one. yours. This yep. is a lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff. And you have public, oh, there, there's my question. But we're volunteer based. So we have uh, somewhere between nine and 15 volunteer attorneys most of the time. So it's not just me. Really? So you, yeah. do they contact you? For example, I, I have a half a dozen people at home watching, you know, that are saying, hey, I want to get involved. I want to work with these guys and give back. Yeah. How well, do I do it? Well, um, unfortunately, we're, we need lawyers. Uh, and I that's thought we really had too many. <laughs> <laughs> but we need lawyers to provide the service because people, people that's one of the questions they ask. Is it a lawyer? Because they don't want to talk to somebody who's not a lawyer. Uh, and oh. I mean, you're, you can be picky if you're looking for free stuff, I guess, uh, and that's that's okay. They totally want the acceptable. source. They want the source. So, and they want somebody they can blame if they're wrong. I guess I, I, I'm not sure. Of that. Nature of the beast of the senior. Yeah, nature of the beast. Sen seniors are a distinct group altogether. 
I mean, you, gotta, you have to have patience to work with seniors. Yeah. You have to really love them. It is a mission. And, it's and, a calling. You have to get their attention. You have to Hard get their to attention. Hard to do. Well, you tell a joke. You do something. You say something stupid. And, uh, they, and then all, now they're watching you. Uh, that's, that's nice. You got to come to one of my classes. Okay. My, I'm very funny. I do really good stand up with my seniors. Good to hear. And I'm very inappropriate with them as well. <laughs> speaking wise, that was speaking wise, <laughs> just for you <laughs> lawyers that are out there watching this. But you don't do, uh, do some things, and I was looking for okay. the sheet on you. Uh, don't we, do. we don't do criminal law. We don't do family law. So when I joke well, and say, well, that was smart. <laughs> right. Well, uh, if you rob a bank, don't call us. If okay. you if you decide you want to leave your husband slash wife. Don't call us. We, it's not what we do. Okay. Uh, one of the major reasons is we're fully insured. And um, family law malpractice coverage is so expensive that we, we couldn't afford it. There's just no way. So we don't do any family law. I, I, the first, I've started clerking for a family law attorney. And the first day on the job, he opens up the bottom drawer of his big oak desk and says, if you're going to do family law, you're going to have to get one of these. And I looked down in there, and there was a, a nickel-plated 357 Magnum. Oh, my and God. And I said, well, I'm not going to do family law. Really? Yeah. Is that combative? Well, everybody hates be. everybody in family law. You, you hate your attorney because you've got to pay him. You hate the other guy's attorney because he's, he's ripping your head off in court. You hate your the opponent because that's your ex. So you, you hate everybody. Do you learn that in law school? <laughs> no, I learned that by being a clerk uh, back when I was a rookie, and I was too way too uh, naive to be a even a law clerk. Where'd back you grow then. up? Um, I'm gonna say all over. Okay. B born in Washington State, but I've lived in Texas and Maryland and Virginia and California. California basically from the time I was 15. And then I traveled. By the time I was 18, I was back on the road everywhere. So. In Ventura County, how'd you get here? Came here to go to law school and really? made it, it was an excellent choice. I love Ventura County. Was that the local law? Ventura College of Law. A lot, great people yeah, come great out of people, there. Absolutely. I'm really impressed with it. Yeah. Now, I'm not necessarily impressed with local governments, but I, <laughs> but I am True. impressed with the law school here. Yeah. I'm, I'm fascinated by what you do because I, I keep thinking to myself, this is what I really want to do, but, you know, doing public policy. Yeah. But uh, did Deborah Sutherland work with you guys? Yes. Uh, in fact, I, I hired Deborah Sutherland a million years ago, and when I went to run the restaurant, she took over my job as the executive director. And then when she got remarried, uh, I came back in and took over from her. She's got the most interesting life oh, story. <laughs> Apparently, she was a dancer. Yes, she was. Uh, she was also a professional boxing referee. Yeah, well, she's a member of the Boxing Hall of Fame, uh, the organizing committee for the. In fact, she invited me to a Boxing Hall of Fame event, and I sit at the same table with uh, Mickey Rooney and George Shavalo, who who fought uh, Muhammad Ali. I mean, she runs in an impressive circle. She is, she's got a huge heart. Oh, absolutely. I've known her probably 30 years at least, if not more. And you can always find her in a room if she's talking. You oh, she is, uh, she's hysterical. Yeah. But she has a great and mighty heart. Yeah. I think you would have to, to be able to do what both you and she do. And again, I'm so impressed by everything you do here. I'm just, I've been looking at this, and it's just amazing to me that you guys have been around that long, and I haven't really delved into what you guys do. We're going to actually try to put together a 40th birthday, but not on July the 1st. On uh, This is my board's decision. Okay. On October the 1st uh, of this year. So it'll, technically it'll be 40 years and three months, but... Uh, when, when the last time we did this was uh, our 35th, and uh, everybody sent us plaques and awards and had a picture. Are you a 501c3? Yes. I did not realize yeah. that. So, so by you doing your community service, that's considered that's uh, not not a billable charge, but that's your community service work. That you go out and do these, you well, know, to I don't, senior I don't centers. Think of it like that. That's my what do you think of that's it? That's my job. 
but you don't get paid. Job. No, I, like I said, I get a stipend from Gray Law. It's not, okay, we wouldn't be able to hire anybody for what I get paid, but our entire annual budget is about $75,000. So that means no litigation, clearly. And by the time you pay for the, the rent and the telephone and a secretary and insurance, um, mm. then, you know, the whatever's left goes to the help. <laughs> so I think uh, I was told that your information is going to be on the bottom of the screen so people can get a hold of you. Okay. Please do. I, I am so impressed by you and what you do and your massive heart. It's, and you really, See, you, I you just keep on person. going. No, you did not. <laughs> if you told me that Reagan was wonderful, you would have fooled me. No, no I don't think I would have bought that one either. Yeah, no <laughs> but way. I am impressed by well, what I had, you do. We had to live through it. I mean, they dumped 5,000 people out of Camarillo State Hospital, and we ended up with the broom. We're still living the, with the collateral the damage yes. here. Absolutely, we are. I we're, agree. Uh, we're living with a nightmare, and it's not going to change. And I'm, it makes me very sad to see what, the damage that was done and not changed. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming on the show. I Anytime. appreciate Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me. I'm honored to get to know you better. <laughs> so now that you come to our meetings, it, yes. when you're sitting at the far end of the far table, end. so you can scamper out the door easily. Yeah. Well, I, my secretary does schedule me pretty tight sometimes. So. Well, I'm grateful you're here. Thank you. So thanks for being here my again. My pleasure. What a treat. Thank you for being here, and uh, we'll see you next week. Gosh, what? You know, I never realized the scope of how big what you do there with the, I did not realize that.